everyone and delighted to be joined with this person who's played with loads of big clubs, also Scotland and the Crying Boys Club. And it is Colin Calderwood. You started off your career at the Crying Boys Club. What's your memories from then? Hi Ryan, Colin Calderwood, sat down in Northamptonshire going to answer a few of the questions that you sent through. So the first question was about my time at Loch Ryan Boys Club. And I know you and all your pals are uh, club members there now. So what I remember is travelling quite a big distance up north, up to Stirling, up to Ayr on not numerous occasions, going to Germany, but really having the facility to go out to the West Fru and play uh, different opposition than the normal local boys that we used to play against. It was uh, it always has been a, a really well-run club and Tommy McBride, Ian Ritchie, Stan King were really to the forefront of it when I was there and I'm delighted to see that the, the boys club itself is still going well. So uh, the night I was over at your training, poor old Ryan Harbottle has uh, got injured. I think you said he, he may have uh, broke his leg. So uh, we wish him well, Ron. I hope your recovery is going okay and you'll soon be back on the football pitch. What advice will you give to me and my teammates? So you're looking for some advice for you and your teammates. Well, the first thing is just to really go and enjoy any of the training and the football matches you play in and, and don't get too hit up about trying to achieve too much too early but a lot of practice will be required to improve and then you will end up at whatever standard that you deserve to be at but the most important thing is to uh, play with 100% commitment uh, but really enjoy this period of your life because it's something that you can look back on and uh, great friendships are made by having good pals and doing well together. When you're up in Shimura one day, will you take us for training? Next time I'm up in Shimura, I'll definitely come and try and take you in the training session. So uh, get ready for that, be fit, and I'll get after one or two of you. You reckon there's a couple of lazy ones in your group, I'll, I'll make sure I, I put a flea in their ear. You moved to Mansfield when you were young. Were you nervous from leaving home? I moved away to Mansfield. The next question, question four. Um, was I nervous about leaving home? Well, I probably was. And um, I was 16. I can remember sitting on the train at Stranraer train station and leaving around about half past six to get the overnight from Glasgow down to um, somewhere Chesterfield or, or Manchester. So it was, it was quite a big thing to do, but I knew I had to leave Stranraer probably to give myself a better chance of making a professional footballer. Mansfield gave me the opportunity and um, I did get homesick, um, but we did get regular or semi-regular visits back up to Stranraer and that always helped that my mum and dad and, and other members of my family would come down occasionally to watch games. After Manfield, you went to Swindon. What did it feel like getting promoted to the Premiership? After Mansfield, we did. Uh, we ended up at Swindon, and we had a nice run at Swindon, going from the bottom divisions all the way through to the Premiership. Um, and that was, you know, an exciting and I really established myself as a footballer in a very good team, surrounded by good managers and other good players. Um, and the ultimate goal was always to get promotion, whether it be 4-3, to 3-2 three, three to or championship as it is now into the Premiership. And, you know, we did it in quite rapid succession. Uh, we went up and then we get demoted back down. And a couple of years later, we went up again. Uh, and still one of the, well, is the proudest thing in football that I've done to, to go with one team 
all the way through the divisions. Here's the first goal. Just watch this amazing free kick from skipper Colin Coldwood. Can you believe it? Well, here it is again in slow motion. A goal is nightmare as the ball drops down. Spot it, and this corner is from Bodin. Up goes Taylor. The ball bounces around. It's a goal! Colin Calderwood, the Swindon skipper, has scored the goal that takes his team in front. There were so many Newcastle bodies in that penalty area. Taylor challenged well. The ball bounces back and eventually Colin Calderwood leads it through. You've played 162 games with Spurs and you were vice-captain. What was your memories from that time? The highlights when I played with Tottenham. Um, it took me a while to settle in at Tottenham, so there wasn't too many highlights in the first season, I can tell you. Then after that, um, gradually got better, but it was a different environment from Swindon and a lot more in the spotlight, certainly the, the, the national spotlight than you are when you played for Swindon Town. The highlight would probably be a quarter-final where we played Liverpool at Anfield and we scored in the last minute to win to get to the semi-final. Unfortunately, semi-finals, Everton really hammered us 4-1, but that minute it just felt like the, the ultimate game at that time. The other time was the uh, League Cup final, or the run in the League Cup, which eventually ended up with us um, uh, winning the League Cup by beating Leicester. So we played all the games apart from the final and the last semi-final. So, <laughs> and again, through that run, we beat Manchester United home, Liverpool away. So to be involved in that gives you a, a medal of any sort when you're at a club like Tottenham. I think it's important to, uh, to look back on and think, well, I've, I've done okay. Here comes Schindler's corner. Ferdinand off the line by Nicky Eden. Nielsen on the follow-up and touched in by Colin Calderwood. Just the start that Tottenham needed to this second period. You've played 36 games for Scotland. What did it feel like to represent your country? Yeah, I was uh, 1995 and made my debut for Scotland. It's a sense of immense pride if you pull on the, the, uh, any jersey of your, your own country. But really, it's sort of represented um, quite a bit to what the family had contributed and, and people like Tommy McBride. And, um, it was nice for people in Stranraer, I hope, to look at somebody who's come from Stranraer Academy and round that area to end up in the national team. And I hope I, I've done them in some way they can say that uh, we've done okay. What was your highlight playing with Scotland? Highlight for playing for Scotland was actually my first home game for Scotland. Qualifying game against Greece. Uh, and if that wasn't enough, it was the day that my son was born. He was born in London. And um, I didn't get the news until shortly before the kickoff. So uh, we ended up winning a game, which was a crucial one in our, in our qualification for Euro 96. So uh, that's, that's still... Because of what happened with the family and my son, 16-8-95, home win against Greece and a, a baby boy. What was your best moment playing football? The next one you've asked is the best moment uh, playing football um, and I, I sort of mentioned it earlier of my promotions with Swindon is, is definitely the highlight because of the journey from 
the lower leagues all the way through and to uh, finally get there and unjustly get put back down once and then do it again. Um, I don't know which one would be uh, the greater achievement, but certainly the second one, beating Leicester in the playoff final to uh, re-enter the Premiership was still the highlight of my career. Who's the best player you've played against and why? The best player that I've played against and why was a guy called Balakov who played for Sport in Lisbon in Bulgaria. Probably if I described him as a, a, a Lionel Messi style player, it, that's the style that he was and we played them with Swindon Town in a pre-season friendly. And he was the first player I had actually no idea what he was going to do with the ball. And the level of their game really struck home to me. I had a lot of improving to do, and we did at Swindon to get anywhere near that level. It was a lesson in uh, everything that I thought I knew about in football. I didn't know anything at all because I was so far behind his actions, it was untrue. What's the best one to eleven players you've played with? You've asked me for a best best eleven, so I've had to jot this down, and I've been fortunate, obviously, to uh, play with a lot of good players, which have helped me. So David James would be my goalkeeper. I played with him at Aston Villa, and and I picked him because of his period when I was at Villa with him, he was um, outstanding in training in the games. Um, such a huge character, big personality and the type of goalie that I like to play behind because he commanded his area, uh, a bit eccentric as all goalkeeper keepers are. Back three would be Stephen Carr on the right of a back three, Sheikha Popescu in the middle and Saul Campbell playing on the left. Stephen was a young boy at Tottenham, excellent pace, had a terrific career and uh, latterly when I joined Birmingham City he was still there. And at 34, 35, he was head and shoulders above everyone else in the in the team and the vast majority of everyone in the division. Popescu went, left Tottenham and went to uh, Barcelona, won the, uh, many trophies with them. Very composed, very cool character, technically excellent and a good reader of the game. Could play midfield, but I would put him in the middle of a back three. Saul Campbell on the left, used his power. I played with him when he was young as well at Tottenham and you know in, in subsequent years became one to be a real powerful, no nonsense, top class defender. So the midfield, this is a uh, I'm going to give you five names. Gary McAllister, Ozzy Ardilas, Paul Merson, Glenn Hoddle, David Ginola. So whichever way you want to line those five up, you can. And the thing you've got to understand is that uh, Ardilas was an excellent defender. Gary McAllister and Merson, um, huge physical distances they could cover. And arguably Gary McAllister, I think, is probably the best player I played with in the Scotland time that I was involved. Glenn Hoddle could play anywhere. And another one who would probably run Balakoff course to be under really understanding I had no idea where he was going to put the ball on lots of occasions. And he has been a great um, educator of my football career. David Ginola, because he was uh, star quality, and in moments he would turn the game. And the front two of Klinsman and Sheringham has a little bit of everything. And very, very, uh, I think there'd be goals in the team. And when you look at that, List of players, very proud to have played with all of those boys. You've played under some great managers, Ardiris, Odo and Makari. Did you always want to get into management? played under some great managers, Ardilis, Hoddle and Macari. Um, but before that, I still had as a strong desire to be a coach and be involved in football. I saw it as a way of being involved in football for a bit longer than just playing. 
and people like uh, Lou McCarry and Chick Bates who were at Swindon, John Trollop, the coaches there were uh, sort of added to the experience I'd gained from Ian Greaves at Mansfield and they sort of led me in the direction that I, I thought it would be a great position to hold and, and something that I started fairly early in my coaching badges to try and gain experience, gain the qualifications and, and then project myself into the game in the coaching capacity. You started off at Northampton Town. How did it feel like getting supported by the Galloway Cobblers? I start, started off at Northampton, you're right, and uh, there was a Galloway Cobblers bus used to come down. Um, and uh, come and support us. So uh, I don't know if they enjoyed the football, but they certainly enjoyed the journeys and I was very appreciative of their support, not just at Northampton, not in the Forest and Newcastle, Norwich, wherever I've been, there's always been some of them turn up occasionally. You have coached some great teams. What have been the highs and lows? Highs and lows of being a manager and uh, or a coach. So the highs are obviously the promotions, whether that be with Northampton, Forest, Newcastle. And the low would have to be uh, probably the, the night in Nottingham Forest where we had a 2-0 lead and lost the second leg against Yeovil in the playoffs to put ourselves out. Missed the chance to go to Wembley to have a chance of promotion. You know, we were so big favourites that... Um, we shouldn't get beat, but we did and deserve to get beat as well on that night. You unfortunately left Cambridge United this year. What does the future hold? Yep, unfortunately left uh, Cambridge early this year. It's, it's things that happen in football. That the person who gets sacked can always argue about it, but in the end, don't waste too much time worrying about it and you look for the next opportunity. So um, the situation at the minute, there's not too much football, so there's very little change in football clubs at the minute. And we probably have to wait until next season to see where the next opportunity may spring up. Ryan, I hope that's answered some of your questions. If you have any more, don't be scared to get back in touch and I wish you all well at Loch Ryan and, and in the Stranraer area. Bye. Thanks Colin for this week's interview and also thanks for donating your Euro 96 top to the Crime Boys Club in 2022. It's going to be the Crime Boys Club 50 year anniversary so we're going to auction it off for donations. Everybody remember to like, subscribe and share. Bye.